me uh, how I became a police officer or did I always want to be a police officer growing up. And I really didn't know that I did, initially anyway. Uh, what I really wanted to do was a race car driver. Uh, <laughs> you know, but does somebody really know their true calling, especially when they're really young? If you're very, very lucky, you might. Sometimes you have to develop it. I didn't know anyone in my family or have any close friends that were police officers. And in fact, the, the few times that I had, <laughs> the few times that I had uh, interaction with law enforcement were very scary, especially as a teenager. And um, I think it's supposed to be scary. I think that's the purpose. So. I do remember watching Angie Dickinson in Police Woman and of course Charlie's Angels and I always thought that is a cool job. <laughs> Academy and Lacey of course and I thought, you know, I could look good running in high heels, right? I could totally do that. Well, I always had this little voice in my head that always said, you'd make a good cop. You would enjoy that. You would really like that. My friends today, my high school friends or school friends today, tell me that they thought I was going to be a forest ranger. I had no idea where they came from. <laughs> I was actually surprised me when they told me that. Uh, but I ended up being an apartment manager instead. <laughs> I have seen almost every conceivable way to plug a toilet. <laughs> you can imagine. And I learned how to fix those toilets. Because that's what apartment managers do. When my daughter, I love that face. When my daughter was about four years old, way, way back in like 1989, I did test for it and was actually accepted as starting, uh, started the process to become a police officer. Uh, but due to a hiring freeze, I, I wasn't hired at that time. Um, during that waiting period, I thought a lot about my daughter. And as a single parent, I thought, how am I going to manage academy life and, and my daughter? Uh, shift work and everything that goes along with police work while that was happening. So I put my little voice away and I, you know, had the job that kept me home on the weekends and during the evenings. And these are the California girls. So I watched that little girl growing up. About 10 years later, uh, when I felt like I was pretty much over the hill, I, was, I felt like I was past my prime and ancient old bones. And I, I was at a turning point in my life. I needed, and more importantly, I really wanted to make a, a career change. And I'd been in management for about 16 years, and I just needed something completely different. My daughter now was close to being a very capable, independent young lady. She, she was, you know, a big focus in my life, and one of the things I wanted to make sure that she knew and watched was that she could do anything that she put her heart and soul into, and I wanted to demonstrate that to her. But because I was the right old age of 35, I thought I was honestly too old for law enforcement. Um, I remember sulking around the house thinking, you know, woe is me. <laughs> I, I remember my little voice, you know, just kind of chipping away at the back of my head and wondering, how did I, how did I let this time get away from me? I'm 35, for crying out loud. I'm, who's going to hire me? I talked to the neighbor whose husband happened to be a deputy sheriff, and all I said to her was, you know, I always thought I'd be a good cop. And she said, why aren't you? And my little voice jumped right in and said, yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to get your attention all this time. <laughs> so I learned about the Deputy Sheriff Reserve Program. You guys probably recognize this as the fairgrounds here. You can be a police officer. You can pay for all your own equipment <laughs> and work for free. <laughs> to interpret the law, investigate the rest, 
help citizens uh, in need. My personal favorite was to drive really, really fast. <laughs> and shoot guns, of course. What was amazing to me was on that very first night of class, the very first night, my little boy said to me, this is it, you're home now. I felt like I had done this before, like I'd been here before. <laughs> my little voice got me through police academy, got me through several more testings for jobs. I was a City of Oak Harbor jailer where I attended the Corrections Academy. I was then a, became a Langley police officer where I attended the police academy, which included dorm living, got to come home on the weekends, and of course the famous dorm food that goes along with it. And now I work for the Island County Sheriff's Office. I'm pretty sure now that I've been doing this for over 13 years, that some of my customers um, <laughs> are bars, wish I hadn't listened to that little voice. <laughs> But here I am, I'm in a man's world, and I'm doing the work I was put here to do. I still pinch myself. Every day, I'm still amazed that I get to do this job. For me, it's that fun. Four years ago, I was promoted to detective. Uh, my focus is sex crimes and crimes against children. This is a very emotionally draining part of law enforcement, but it is a very, very necessary. I am a woman, it gets done well, and it gets done with precious little resources. If I had known when I started that this was going to be my job now, would I have done this? And I, absolutely, I would have to say I wouldn't have changed a thing. Maybe other than a bigger office, <laughs> throwing a hot tub. <laughs> Maybe a massage room? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, and maybe some undercover stuff on my Batmobile. <laughs> um, I'd like to see the state and federal government uh, kick in some money for us to, to have enough people per capita, but that's another, that's a whole other speech on another day. Back when I'm old and gray, or in the future when I'm old and gray, uh, I will look back, rocking on my front porch, deep in the jar in the house, and I won't have any regrets listening to my little voice. Becoming a police officer, a deputy, a detective, whatever else I decide to accomplish. I would hate to think that I didn't listen to that little voice, that I didn't take that first step and just stay where it was safe and comfortable. Um, I hope everyone here has the opportunity to experience what feeds you to make sure that you listen to your little voice and make it happen. <laughs> Harold Whitman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go and do that. Because what this world needs is for people who have come alive. Thank you.